welcome to Kingdom Compliance with Dr. James Bruton, offering biblical guidelines, principles of the kingdom of heaven that will help you stay tuned in to the frequency of heaven and reap the benefits that accompany you as a citizen of the kingdom, the best the king has to offer. Today's topic is the kingdom walk of faith. In the King James Version of the Holy Bible, the word faith is only used twice, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 20, and in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Let's read each scripture respectively. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The Hebrew root word for faith is alman, which means to build up or support, to foster, as would a parent or nurse, to render firm or faithful, to trust or believe, permanent or quiet, to be true or certain. The Greek word pistis is translated as faith in English and means persuasion, credence, moral conviction, the truthfulness of God, truth itself, and assurance. In other words, pistis is what God knows and believes to be the truth. Vine's Expository Dictionary of New Testament Words says that pistis is a firm persuasion, a conviction based upon hearing. Luke Chapter 17, verse 5 says, The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. In response to his disciples' request to increase their faith, Jesus made it clear to them that they didn't need any more faith. He required them to use the faith they already had. You see, faith is the servant of the born-again believer. It is the duty of the believer's faith to do what we command it to do. Our faith has been given to us by God, to use as God uses faith. In other words, we use God's faith and God uses our faith. By faith, God's firm persuasion of what he knows and believes to be true, God called those things that were not as though they were. God believes and speaks his faith. And as being one spirit with him, every born again believer is to do the same by using the faith of God as God. God is faith. And faith is God. God has distributed to every person the measure of faith. Let's read that from Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sound judgment, according to the measure of faith God has distributed to every man. The born-again believer, who is spiritually mature, who possesses the attributes of God, his character, knows that God has dealt to him the measure of faith from his own faith. That means the God kind of faith. God has not given us a faith that is of lesser value or weaker than his own. That's why when we use God's faith, he uses ours. God's faith and the faith of the true believer is the same faith. When you were born again, your spirit was reborn in the image of your heavenly father. Even though your body wasn't born again, it was bought and paid for through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross at Calvary. God always calls things that are not as though they were, and he has called your physical body holy and acceptable to him. No one can earn righteousness. You can't be good enough, long enough for God to call you righteous. He has already given you authority and made you righteous with his righteousness. It's up to you to receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Let's read Romans chapter 5, verse 17, and 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For if by one man's offense, and we're talking about Adam here, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. For he made him, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. You can't gradually become righteous. You were recreated in Christ Jesus, made the righteousness of God in him by faith. 
you receive this gift by faith. And once you do, you'll reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. In other words, we will reign as kings in life. The Greek word for made in 2 Corinthians 5.21 is genoma, which means to cause to be, to become, or come into being. Again, every born-again believer has been made to become the righteousness of God by faith in Jesus. Faith is a spiritual law. A law is something that works every time. The law of faith is just as powerful and unchanging as the natural laws of gravity. However, spiritual laws cannot be figured out with the natural mind because the carnal mind is enmity against God and doesn't have the capacity to fully understand the law of God. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is the law of faith. And you'll find that in Romans chapter 8, verse 2. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's the law of faith. It supersedes the law of sin and death. The law of faith is activated by words. Watch this, positive or negative. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Righteousness comes through faith, and faith is a spiritual law. Let's read from Romans chapter 3, verses 21 through 28. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. There is a connection between believing and speaking. This is how God operates, and it's how God created man in his own image to do the same thing. Furthermore, it's the way you were born again. We were born again into the kingdom of God. Believing and speaking with corresponding action releases the power of God. James chapter 1 verse 22 says it like this, But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Then in chapter 2 of James verse 20, it says, But do you want to know, O foolish man? that faith without works or corresponding action is dead? If you don't believe God's word enough to act on its truth before you see the desired end result, your faith will be ineffective. In the faith realm, you activate the law of faith by speaking. You must believe and speak. God believes and speaks. He calls those things that are not as though they were, and he expects us as his co-laborers in the earth to do the same as imitators of him. Believers are to use the measure of the God kind of faith he gave us when we were born again. The Spirit of God who came to live inside you when you were born again brought his faith with him. You have God's own faith living inside you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 says, And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Believers have been given the name of Jesus and the authority to use it to change natural circumstances. Faith looks into the unseen based on the covenant promise and, despite natural circumstances, speaks the desired end result. The promises of God, the desired end result, are received through faith. Let's read that from Romans chapter 4, verses 16 through 25. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, 
not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, that is God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what God had promised he was also able to perform, and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. In agreement with God's word to them, Abraham and Sarah called those things that were not as though they were every day, just as we are to do if we, like them, desire to see our circumstances change. As a result, they became strong in faith, giving glory to God for what he had promised them. They received the impossible. In Romans chapter 10, verse 8, the apostle Paul said, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. God upholds all things by the word of his power. The word of his power is faith power. Faith is the name of the created spiritual force of God, and it is produced in the born again human heart by hearing the word of God. Just as faith comes by hearing the word of God, watch this, fear comes by hearing and believing the lies of the devil who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God's covenant, blood-backed word, paints an image inside you that says you're healed. The devil shows you symptoms and tells you you're going to die. Now, you have a choice. The facts say you're sick, but God's word, remember now, what God knows and believes to be the truth, says you're healed. Whose report will you believe? If your faith is weak, and fears tighten its grip on you, remember Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Put the word of God about your healing in your ears and before your eyes and speak it boldly out of your mouth. Faith will begin to grow and choke out the fear. Jesus is the word made flesh, the living word, and he is love. If you'll stay with the word, believe you receive what it says, and act like it's true, no devil in hell can stop the power of God's word from manifesting healing in your body. Jesus has given you the right to speak his word in his name because of his shed blood. Your mind may try to hold back in fear, but step outside of your flesh and what your mind may be thinking and then boldly declare. Make a declaration. Say something like this, I am righteous in God. Therefore, I'm supposed to prosper. I'm supposed to be healed. I'm supposed to be debt free. It's my right in the kingdom of God. And it's my kingdom walk of faith. How about that? To develop this kind of faith, this God kind of faith, you must put the word first place in your life and make it final authority. Sell it in your heart that whatever the word says I am, I am that. Whatever the word says I can do, I can do that. Spend time meditating on it, thinking about it, and pondering it. God's word, which builds the capacity for faith and sets the vision before you, that's what does it. It's God's word. Then watch this. Make the quality decision to live by faith in his word, no matter what your circumstances say. Most of all, decide to live by love, because faith won't work without it. Jesus is the author and finisher of your faith. So receive him not only as your savior, but also as the developer of your faith. You'll find that when your faith begins to grow, Satan's dominion in your life will begin to wane. Circumstances will begin to yield and no longer look so overwhelming. Faith is your servant. So believe, 
Speak and act on God's word, and then watch your faith remove those mountains and cast them into the sea. Choose to fill your heart with the word of God. Put those scriptures concerning healing, finances, and deliverance before your eyes, in your ears, and in your mouth. Think about them, believe them on purpose, and speak them day and night. Your faith, the creative power of God himself working in your spirit, will come roaring out of your mouth and send the devil packing. The truly humble believer knows that God has dealt to him the measure of faith, the God kind of faith that speaks to the mountains in his life and to the mulberry trees blocking his way. He doesn't doubt the faith God has given him, but boldly commands those obstacles to be removed and cast into the sea. The humble believer operating in the God kind of faith, faith as God, casts out devils and lays hands on the sick. He knows by faith that they will recover. He believes he receives when he prays. He doesn't boast about himself and what he can do, but he walks in the royal law, the law of love. That makes the faith of the humble believer full of the power of God to continue the ministry of Jesus in the earth. The humble believer is an ex exhibition of the kingdom walk of faith. If you would like to refer this episode to others, click on share and subscribe to the YouTube channel to stay up to date when new episodes drop. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad you did. I hope you join me next time for Kingdom Compliance with Dr. James Bruton, where we stay tuned in to the frequency of heaven.